Yeah. Hey, get out of here, son. Can't touch this. Da, na, na, na. Double trouble. Uh, wrong button. Oh, that's cool. Best watch out now, boys. I got a bone sword. Oh, oh. I did crap. Oh, we can claim another thing. Bone ring crafting. Five, four, three, two, one, done. What do I do? Equipment. Oh, I auto equipped it. Look at that. What else can we get? Bone guard vestment and vermin salve. Ooh, look at all this good. All these goodies. A solve recovers 2.5% of your maximum health every one and a half seconds for 15 seconds. Nice. What if I want some leggings? We need some animal hide for these other ones. We can get the leggings and the chest guard. It, I thought we could make this, but it won't let me create it. Oh, what is that? Oh, they respawn? Suckers. Get out of here. Hit me. Oh, don't hit me now. I meant hit me earlier. Oh, we, we about to die. Let me eat another rat. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Like one HP. Oh, gotcha. Oh, we could have fed on him. Son of a biscuit. It's okay. What does Tainted Heart do? Uh, anyways, I better make a video. What's up, sons? It's Blind Red with Son of a Tech once again, and I was just playing V Rising on a dedicated server that is built on Flux. And today, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. That being said, of course, I am no expert in this. I did not build a custom map. All I did was a request to pull an already created Docker image. You guys can do the same thing if you want to stand up a V Rising dedicated server on Flux. And I'll tell you, it's a lot cheaper than going with an alternative uh, VPS hosting uh, option like either one of the gaming ones or something like uh, let's see a vulture or digital ocean etc and it does come with some caveats that we will also discuss but let's get into it right after a word from today's sponsor Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Gamersups. Gamersups provides a healthy alternative to sugary energy drinks with delicious flavors like Misfits Melon or my favorite Blue Raz. I use the Gamersups as an alternative to support my active lifestyle outside of content creation. Caffeine free options are great for late night gaming after the kids have gone to bed. And my favorite part about Gamersups is that they accept cryptocurrency. And for a limited time, when you purchase a tub with cryptocurrency, you will receive a Bitcoin shaker. Follow the affiliate link in the description and don't forget to use code SOAT at checkout. Welcome back. So first things first, I'm going to assume you know how to set up a Zellcor wallet and you have some Flux funds in your Zellcor wallet. If you don't have this configured yet, you can definitely check out a ton of different tutorials on YouTube for setting up Zellcor and basically getting funds moved over from whatever your favorite exchange is. If you would prefer, I did a specific video on setting up Zellcor wallet as well as the exchanges and all that. Let me know in the comment section below. 
But for today, my primary goal is to show you guys how to deploy a V rising server on flux. So first things first, I did have to go through basically a couple steps ahead of time so that this was even viable or possible in the first place. And one was getting the image, the Docker image whitelisted. Now I'll discuss getting images whitelisted, etc., in a different video, but suffice to say the image we went with was this one in particular, that is the true Osiris V rising Docker image. And basically it has everything you need in it to go ahead and set up a V rising dedicated server with Docker. Why do we need a Docker image to deploy on flux? Well, that's because that's how basically everything is run on flux and you'll see exactly why here in just a second. So the next thing of course was going to essentially move into the whitelist and basically all you really have to do is fork this particular well, fork flux and then edit essentially this portion and get in you can see here add in the docker image you wish to deploy and then hopefully it gets whitelisted if they have issues with it so on it'll all be commented into here and once again we can go through that process in a different video if you need it okay so let's talk about getting V rising running on flux. First things first, you're going to want to navigate to home.runonflux.io. From here, you're going to want to log in with your Zell ID by clicking the Zell ID button to log in. Once you do this, it will prompt you and say, do you want to open Zell core? And we're just going to say open Zell core and go to our Zell core wallet. Here, if you have a pin set up, it will require that you go ahead and type in your pin and then click sign and send. If you don't have a pin set up, you will not have to click the, the or type in your pin. And then at this point, you can go back to your web browser. From here, we're going to go down to the apps button and click register app on flux. And we're going to type in our name. You can name this whatever you want. We're going to do V rising for description. We're going to say this is a V rising server running on flux, right? Your instances, I wouldn't worry about too much. You can keep it at three. Of course, if you want to increase them, it's really going to be for other applications that require multiple redundancy as far as the amount of instances and so, so on and so forth. Three is all you need for this particular setup. You're going to have name once again. You can name this whatever you want, and this will be your component, basically. And then you have your description, which once again, we're just going to go ahead and copy the same data over. And then you have your repository. You can get the repository from the Docker image that we talked about earlier. We're going to go ahead and copy it from here. Or you can copy it from, of course, the approved list on the Flux GitHub as well. Just make sure if you copy it from the Docker uh, page that you go ahead and remove that, that beginning part, which is just the Docker pull command. And it is the true Osiris forward slash V rising latest. Now for your ports, this will be your public port. It'll be the port you utilize to connect to the server from inside the game. So you don't really need to change this. For domains, make sure you go ahead and put in two quotes. And for the uh, basically the container ports, this will be your internal ports. We can get that port specifically once again from this Docker image page, which is this 9876. We're going to copy that out and plug it into here. Now, there is an important note about this. This will be only for direct connect. It will not be listed on the public servers for the game or inside the game. If you want to do that, we can cover that in a later video. Of course, you will need to change the ports to the 27015 and the 27016. And there's some other additional configurations you would have to do within commands and so on. Now we have our environment variables. Example environment variables are listed here on this page and then as well as the GitHub for your vRising dedicated server. Here's a list of variables to add a variable. For example, we'll do the time zone here. You're just going to copy the variable and then we're going to put in a quotation mark, paste the variable in, put an equal sign 
and then put in whatever key we want. In this case, I'm just gonna take the Europe, Brussels for the time zone, and then another basically quotation mark. To add a second variable, you will want to put in another comma and then another quotation mark. Select the second variable you wish to have. For example, server name in this case, we're gonna type it in and then we will name it whatever we prefer. In this case, I'm gonna do flux and then add in another quotation mark. Now here is our container data. We can get the container data information once again from the main Docker page here. And it's gonna be this MNTV rising. And that is where all of our data is gonna be stored. So of course the container will need to know where that data is. So we're gonna paste it in and it's MNT forward slash V rising. Finally, we have resources, and for the resources, it is recommended to do four cores for 10 players on this particular game. So we'll do four cores, 16 gigabytes of memory, so it'll be 16,000 for the RAM setting. And for the SSD, the actual game data files only take up five gigabytes. It can be pretty tiny. You do have the OS to worry about. In this case, for today, we'll do an example of 20. I don't have an exact, I just know that, for example, you're just not gonna have a ton of data needed for this particular, in this particular case. So, once this is all complete, you're gonna click the compute registration message. You may get some errors. In this case, let's see what the error is. It says parameters for Flex App Component V Rising are invalid. Let's go ahead and double check all of our settings. It says the environment variables are wrong. So let's double check our environment variables here. Okay, so there we go. We just had to type it out. Something was not working. I guess if you have a copy paste issue, go ahead and type it all the way out and see if that resolves it. We went ahead and just named the server name test. It could also be that we can't name the server name and the variable as flux. I don't know exactly, but pretty much Still, same thing, if you wanted to add in another one, we'll go ahead and test. We'll do the time zone and equals, or the, yeah, the quotes, time zone equals Chicago, and then just quote and comma, and then we'll compute that out once again and that succeeded. So you may have to scroll down and you can see here it will say register app. So we're gonna go ahead and click the register flux app. Now it may say that we need to go ahead and sign in first. So at this point we're gonna sign in with the Zell core once again, click the open Zell core. You will have on your page, once again, your pin that you need to add in. And then you'll go ahead and Oops, let's see. Sometimes it you have to close the old one. Let's redo that. There we go. If the sign and send button doesn't happen, go ahead and cancel, close out of it, and then reinitiate the sign in from the home.run on Flux. Once you've done that, you can go back to your web browser and click the register Flux app. And it should say propagating message across the Flux network and at this point you can scroll down again and this is where you pay so we're going to go ahead and click the pay button click the open zell core option go to the test bench say proceed and pay you can see here it's going to cost us 5.8 flux that's going to be about four dollars and 26 cents you'll have to type in your pin and click the verify button and then click the send button and then it will tell you the transaction is sent and you can go back to the desktop or to your web browser. And at this point, it may take a little bit of time for it to spin up. So where it will be listed will be under your global apps and then the my apps option. I already have one built here. The new one will spin up here in a second and we can see it. But for now, we're just gonna show you guys what you're looking for. What you are going to be looking for is essentially this IP and this port. So your open public port. So let's go ahead and get the game booted up and I'll show you guys where to put it in in game. All right, so once you're in game, you're gonna click the play button, the online play button, then click find servers, then click display all servers and settings and direct connect. At this point, this is where you will paste in the IP for your Flux server. And then you will go ahead and come down here 
and grab your port as well from the browser. I'm actually doing that right now as we speak. So you're going to copy that port out of this section where it says port, the 33916. Then we're going to go back to the game. And after the port, we're going to paste in our port number there. If it messes up, you can go ahead and make sure it is added in right. Pasting too much stuff in there. All right, hold on. Let's get that. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to type in your IP in your port, which you can get from the Flux app. Um, that being said, of course, sometimes it doesn't paste in properly. There we go. And then let's grab the port once again. All right, so once the server IP and then it's going to be colon and your port number is placed in, you're going to click the connect button and it should connect and start saying loading. You can click when you're ready. And congratulations, you are now playing V Rising on Flux. So I hope that tutorial was entertaining and helpful if you're going to run a vRising server on Flux. I highly encourage it. That being said, some of the caveats here is basically going to be surrounding... Let me leave before I die. <laughs> is going to be surrounding persistent storage. I have been running a Minecraft server on Flux here and there for a while and it has had some issues where when it reset a couple times, we lost the data that was on there. For vRising, I don't know what data that is that we would lose necessarily. There are persistent storage issues still going on. So just a disclaimer there. That being said, you do get basically a dedicated vRising server for less than $5 a month, which is cheaper than pretty much anywhere else you're going to be able to find one. You also get to play with Web3 functionality and utilize something brand new. So your experience there is going to be obviously wanted and needed in the future, I think, at this point. So start learning and start getting used to the dashboard as it sits right now. I think that that could also be fantastic for your resume if you completely understand how all this functions. We'll dive into more detailed, more complicated deployments later on as I learn along with you all. If you guys have questions, definitely check out the Flux Discord, not my Discord. Uh, go to them. They'll help you get sorted. Little Stash over there is amazing and can help out a lot. I primarily wanted to do the tutorial and a quick tutorial for how to do a vRising server on Flux to obviously promote basically learning and fun. And I wanted to build a vRising server myself. That's pretty much how I do this channel is if it's something I'm interested in, I'm going to do it and I'm going to just show you guys how to do it. I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell down below. And I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more. Or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.